Well, hello, stampers. It's the Pampered Stamper, and happy Tuesday to you. It's time for stories and stamps, and we are going to be making a card with the Deckled Circles dies. This was a request. I love it when my customers make requests and ask me to use certain products. So I'm so happy to be sharing this amazing product with you. Let's take a look. I'm going to be using them to make a Christmas card. So they come, our dies come in these, these plastic pouches. And I usually transfer them into a stamp set with um, with a magnetic sheet inside, but these don't go with a matching one. So I'm thinking to invest in some high quality things. I forget what company it's from, but look at all these dies. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen dies. I could have just looked here. Quality, quantity, fourteen. So we're going to use the biggest one first. Okay, and this is going to be our card base. So what I'm going to do, I think our card base is going to be early espresso. So I'm taking a full sheet of early espresso, and then I'm going to take my paper trimmer, and we're going to cut it, fold it in half at five and a half. So here we go. I haven't made a circle card in forever. When we had this huge circle die years and years ago, so. I don't often use the, the die cutting machine on a video, but this is how it's going to go. So you want to just have it so that it's up here so that you have a nice fold at the top of your card. So we're going to put our regular die cutting machine in. It won't be in totally. And it's nice that this one is so nice and wide so it fits right across. I should have maybe flattened it a little bit with scoring it, like using a bone folder, but here we go. So we're going to crank this through. I'm hoping I didn't get off the edge. I might have. You know, I'm going to move it a little bit because we don't want it flat on the bottom. There we go. There. That's better. I can see a little bit of brown on the edge. That's what I want. There we go. And you will hear some clicking and clacking. See? Oh, that wasn't too bad, actually. So then we're going to take it and have a look at how I did. So here we go, and we have our card, like so. See? So that's our card base. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to take, we'll, we'll put this one aside, and we're going to take the next largest circle, um, deckled circle die. And I'm going to move this out of the way, and we're going to get our stamp apparatus in here. First, the next deckled circle die. So this is the next biggest one. And we're going to use this to stamp out our image. Well, not stamp, die cut it. So we're going to take a big sheet of very vanilla. I'm going to cut that in half as well. So we're going to cut that at five and a half. And I'm going to use a retired product. It's a stamp apparatus. I'm doing it because I like to get a nice dark image. I have extra stamp apparatuses. If you want to get one from me, I can ship it to you. Um, Stampin' Up! no longer sells it because there was a conflict. There was a, um, what do you call that, a copyright by Misty. So they won the lawsuit and Stampin' Up! and Tim Holtz lost and they can no longer sell their machines that are actually superior. But I think that the Misty people there must be some technology that they, they put a patent on. So I'm going to lay this this way, and then I'm going to hold it with the magnet, and we're going to use this die. I mean, not die, this stamp set, and it's called Graceful Deer. It's just one background stamp, and I'm going to put it in the middle. And before I do that, I need to make sure, yeah, that works. Just big enough. All right, so we'll pick it up, and I'm going to stamp this in between okay. I'm actually standing up, so if it looks a little bit weird, my image, that's why I'm standing to do this. Normally I sit. So here we go. You could also use our biggest block. That works well too, but I like it just in case I didn't do this dark enough. But it is. It's great with on the first go. So we're going to take that and we're going to cut it out. So let me see. This was the biggest one. I put it away. See, so now we're using the next size. Okay, make sure I have the right one. Okay. Get our 
stamp the wrap card. Let's get our die cutting machine out of there. And bring it on. Bring this over. And there. That looks good. It's just like a giant roller press that, that cuts, goes right through to the other side. You can hear the, the clicking this time. And now, this is now where it starts to get interesting. I am going to take the next circle, so we're going to put these away. And let's see. So we keep, we'll use all the dies. So the next one I'm going to use to cut out a contrasting, I'm going to make green circle. Okay, so we're going to move this out of the side. We're going to make a plain green circle, gar garden green. Here we go. And I'm not going to, you don't have to watch me cut these all out. Okay, I have a confession. I messed up. The next cutting is not supposed to be this one. It's going to be this. I'm going to cut a circle out of this. Am I? I'm not logical. I'm not a logical person. I have to think really hard. This is going to go over top and then a smaller one is going to get cut out. You know what? I'll know for sure. So this is the green one. I'm going to grab my card. No more surprises. Look, here's my card. It made sense when I did it and now it's not making sense, but let's see. This will tell me the truth. Oh yeah, this is good. Okay, so then this is the next one. I now have to get the next circle, which is this one. And I'm going to cut out, let's see. Yeah. I'm going to cut this out, so that's the next one. Okay. Okay, let's review. Okay, so we use the largest circle to cut the card. Then we use the second largest to cut the image. Then we use the third largest to cut the green. And then we cut the fourth largest to make this one. So we're going to take this piece and put it on our card. And then I'll just trim off the edge. Then we put the next one on. And then I'm going to put this one on. But I'm going to do one more cut. One more cut of green, one more cut of the design. Okay, so we are now ready to make the last cut. I'm going to cut this design one more time, and we've already done five cuts. One for the base, um, one for the outside here. The next one is green, then another one from the picture, and then another one to layer in between. And as soon as I'm done cutting this last one, we're going to put it all together. Okay, so now we're done with all the cutting, and we have used six of these circle dies, and now we're going to make something really beautiful. So once you wrap your mind how you do it every other one, then it makes sense. So the largest one was for the card itself. Then we have this piece. So you want to make sure that your tree chunks on the left-hand side are straight up and down. So I'm going to just even this out with the crack of my table. And then we're going to put some liquid adhesive on the back of this. And I love using the liquid because just use a thin amount and it gives you a bit of wiggle room. Okay. Oops. It is also can be messy, but when you spill like this, just pick it up and rub it till it just turns into like a dry little thing. Okay. So let's carefully move that, turn it around. I love the decals. It reminds me of old-fashioned photos. Okay, so my trees look like they're going fairly straight up and down. And I'm a little bit over. Let's see if I can move this a bit. Yeah, see, so that was nice. The fact that I had liquid adhesive allowed me to move this around. And my trees look pretty straight up and down. So the next thing is easy. I'm going to take my garden green and that covers up the hole with just a little bit, okay? But for this one, I want to use some dimensionals because I want to add the layers so that it looks really cool. 
and I'm thinking our cardstock is pretty sturdy. We don't have to wallpaper it with dimensionals. Okay. So maybe one in the middle. Okay. So you can always tell where a crafter lives if you find one of these little dimensionals. Okay. There we go. And now we're going to take the next wing. And we want to make sure the trees are your guide. Okay. You want to make sure that the trees are lined up. So we do the same thing again. Flip it. Add a thin line of take it adhesive. And here we go. There. Now again line up the trees. And then we're good to go. Because we hardly have any deer on here. So the tree is our we've got the deer showing up now here on the right hand side. There. Now we're going to take this green piece and we're going to pop it again. So, what is one of the Stampin' Up! basics, a basic thing that you couldn't do without? I would love to hear that in the comments. And if you do like this video, please make sure you subscribe to my YouTube channel and that you leave a comment and a thumbs up because then YouTube thinks, oh, People are actually enjoying Jackie's content, and then they will share it, which is really nice. That's a tipping point. So now I'm going to take this whole piece, and there's no trees to go by, but you see how there we have to just align the deer so that he matches up. And in the middle, a little bit more. There we go. Now the deer is good, and that deer, her nose is just sticking up into the tree there. And let me see. Yeah, I'm, I'm not too badly off. And then we just have to finish this card. And there's a bunch of ways we can do that. I found another die, another stamp set that's really pretty. Let's get rid of that. And remember, we're using this deer on the right as the guide. There. And then we have to make sure the other one has his nose correct. Okay. So what I did was, let me just zoom in a little bit so you can get a little closer view of the card. There. So this is Garden Green, Early Espresso, and then we have Pecan Pie for the deer. And then I made a little, like a bouquet, like a sprig of holly and things. I don't think it's, what do you call it? It's not mistletoe, I don't think. But I used this stamp set to do that. So I, I was playing with the Joy of Noel. And let me just move this out of the way. And when I play, I keep a little baggie of the things that I've already made. I don't have a magnetic sheet in here yet, but there's some lovely dies. Um, and I'm missing a die. Oh, that's, oh no, here it is. Thank goodness. This is a really great die. So let me get my little baggie of goodies out so I can share with you. This is so much fun because when you go to make a card, you already have some things. So I colored this with blends. Garden green. No, shaded spruce and old olive and real red and cherry cobbler. So you can combine greens and you can combine reds. We do not have a garden green blend. So for these here, I used a garden green marker. And then we have, this is the, the sprig. And then this is a holly leaf. But the holly leaf comes from the Christmas Classics dies, which I sold this weekend, so I don't own them anymore. So I can't make another one. And then we have these, this comes out of the middle of that holly leaf. And then we have these little guys and these cute little sprigs. So what I did when I was making this the first time around, I, you know what, I think there's two. There's two of this one. So I have to die cut another one. And then there's two of this. And what I do for that, I'm going to show you that first. This is another Stamparatus trick. So let's move all my other stuff out of the way. I'm going to pause it for a minute to clean it. Okay, so we're going to use our Stamparatus again. Let me zoom back out. And because we're using a photopolymer stamp, we're going to put in the black insert. And then I die cut three of them, and I'm going to use this as a template. But then, I love this trick. I take my stamp, and I'm going to lay it in the black part. I'm going to stand up and make sure 
there. Yeah, that looks good. And then, oh, there, I was looking for my memento here. So pick up this one. And then we put the die cut in the negative spot. Right, so that it's like a little wooden child's wooden puzzle piece. There it is. And then we're going to ink up our spray. And then we're going to stamp. And what's really neat about this is that you don't have to carefully die cut this thing. You just got die cut a naked one. So you don't have to worry about your stamp moving or your die moving. And then you can just keep putting in your little naked die cuts and you can stamp a whole whack load of them in rapid succession without having to do any fiddly work. And it's just such a joy. And I did three right away, even though I only need two. That way, the next time I go to make a card, I already have a gift waiting for me. That's the story. That's the tip that I want you to remember today. Let me know if you don't have a stamp apparatus and you would like one. Okay, because I'm still here now in Canada for nine more days, and then I finally get to fly home to my hubby. I'm so excited about that. All right, now, you know what? I'm going to use this because I want to show you something. These little berries do some in cherry cobbler and and some in real red, and then you get a more realistic. There we go. So I always start with the the dark. So I'll go with the dark closest to the stem, and I'll do three in cherry cobbler, maybe four, and then I'm going to use the light. And then you have a shaded little berry. Even though they're very tiny, it still shows up. Okay, and then we're going to do the other ones in real red. So the darkest close to the stem. And then we'll fill in with light. And it just looks really nice to have two shades of red berries because if you look quite closely at a berry bush, all the colors are not exactly the same. So there we go. So we have one. And I don't know if you can see it. You can see the different shades there, can't you? Yeah. So we're going to do both of those. And then we're going to make our little arrangement. Okay. And when I teach classes, whenever we color, it gets quiet in the room. Blends are, if you've never colored before, our blends just make coloring an almost guaranteed success. They don't leave lines. Um, you get a really nice, rich color. It's the $13.50, I think, for a set. So you get a dark one and a light one. And uh, they're just really, really nice to work with. Wonderful hobby, hobby gift for yourself. Comes in almost all of our colors. I wish it came in all of our colors, but it doesn't. So now let's find our card here and let's lay them down. And you know what? I didn't make two of these yet, but maybe we'll just do one. I'm just going to lay them out. So I have this one and maybe we can do one of these. This one's a bit big though. I wonder if I could cut it down. This one is pretty. We'll think about that. And then here we have our big holly and branch. Maybe we won't have two branches to make this one different. Then this little guy, oops, I'm just, I first lay my pile out to see if I like it or not. And then once I like it, see, I also did those in our glimmer paper. I think it's called Bedazzle or Bedazzle. See, that looks nice too. And then I use some little real red holly berries. I had some red glimmer paper yet from a couple of years ago. And this, to you and yours, is not, I don't think, in this set. No, the Joy of Noel doesn't have that one. It's from Christmas Classics. So I just glued them all together, and then I put the little tabby on there. And that's really nice. And then in the inside, take a look. I did this. So what you do for that is, we're just going to move this off to the side for a minute. Here's our big deckled square. Oh, I have to find my stamp. So this is the big block that I was telling you about. This is block F. 
So I'm just going to lay it down. It's huge. And the background stamp goes on there. And then I just want this side. Well, actually, yeah, I do. There. One, two, three, four, five. And here we have it. And then we're going to stamp make your spirits, making spirits bright. On the top. Put that right here. And red. Oh, it's real red. There we go. Pinky fingers. Pick that up with the block. Tap, tap, tap. Make sure my trees are perpendicular. One, two, three, four, five. There. So that can go in the inside of our card. And then we'll put together our bouquet. And then our card is done. Now, look, I got a little bit of ink on there. But look, I got my inky fingers. And that's pretty wet. Yeah. This is what happens. And now I just got more ink. I might not put this in the card. Ah! Okay, this is my sign that I'm done. Here's the finished card. Let me zoom out so you can see. Oh, and I do have one other tip, which I'm going to share with you. Open it up. Can you think of what would make this card even nicer? You think about that for a minute, and I'll go get it. Okay, I'm feeling bad about my card, so we are going to do this. We're going to take some liquid adhesive, and we're going to make our little bouquet. So I just put glue on the end, and then I flip up the sprigs a little bit so that they look a little more 3D. And there. And now, oh, here it is. Sometimes things, and I'm putting the adhesive a little bit lower. I didn't think about that on the first piece because it has to sit on the highest piece and then extend over like so, and I don't want to cover up my deer. Okay, so I'm making sure that the deer are not covered. Then my little sprig of berries. There. I'm also being careful that the stem is not on the glimmer paper. Things don't stick well to glimmer paper. It's just the way it is. What you can also do is take a glue dot. So uncover the glue dot, push it on here. I still have an old pokey tool. I've lost my big one here. And then we're going to add a few more glimmer pieces. So I'm going to do another glue dot. You can also roll your glue dots if they're too big. Just make them into a little, little bunch. And I'm gonna put one on the back of Green. There. Bring it around. I'm going to put that one like so, I think. There. And then a gold one still. Again, I'm going to roll up the glue dot so that it's a little bit scrunched. Pick up the gold. And let's see what I have here. And then I'll add maybe a linen thread or or the to you and yours for some other berries or whatever. But it does look nice, doesn't it? And now the last piece de resistance is this Wreath of Stella brush. Okay, give it a shake and then pull it apart and it's literally a glitter brush and you can glitter your deer. Now, I don't know, I'm just gonna zoom, I don't know if you can see it, but in real life it adds such a nice shimmer, it's just beautiful. And it also makes your ink a little bit darker. When your Wink of Stella runs out, do not throw it out. Then you can use it as a blender pen or an aqua painter. Okay, because it's got a really nice fresh tip. I also like to add it to the red berries. So you're just going to have to trust me on this, that it's beautiful. It is. Just a little bit. You could also add a little bit of fine tip glue and that will dry clear and raised on this. 
So maybe you can see it on the berries. Yeah, you can see a little bit on here. You can see the sparkle when I tilt it. Okay. Well, that is that. I hope you enjoyed this little um, tutorial of using the deckled dies. There's lots of them. There's 14 of them. So someone said, you know what, these would make a great ornament as well. You could just run a string through the top and these are the ones that I didn't use. Oh, I'm showing them and you're just looking at me. My goodness, Jackie. This is a squirrel moment. These are the ones that I didn't use and these are the ones that I did use. So it's nice and big. If you're a scrapbooker, these would be great too for um, putting larger elements on your page. So I hope you have a super day. Thank you so much for joining me. Bye.